Now, we will get to know that what are the wide applications of coal. See the table here, the diagram on the board. Coal is not as versatile as petroleum, but you can't ignore coal because coal also have application in different areas. Coal actually gives three types of products, coke, coal tar and coal gas. First you take coke, coke <coughs> used in manufacture of steels, this coal tar, see the coal tar how many applications we have. Generally we use a word called tar road, the roads which are remained by tar, actually the tar is coal tar. Coal tar is very tough, very black in color, very strong. That is why this coal tar used as a layer on the roads, so that the roads will become good in shape, <coughs> have good elastic property, so that the vehicles can have a smooth driving. So that is why it is very popular in, in making up roads. Next, the coal tar not only very popular in making roads, it is also used in naphthalene, perfumes, photographic metals, synthetic fibers, paints, explosives, medicine, pesticides, synthetic dyes. See the, the wide varieties of application of coal tar. That is why coal is also very famous. Now the third product, coal gas. Coal gas used as fuel in industries. In that way, we have many varieties of applications using petroleum as well as using coal. Now, you are seeing another table which are the wide applications or you can say uses of petrochemicals. The first point is what is petrochemical? I have already mentioned that petrochemical is also a product coming from petroleum, but the main definition of petrochemical is, it is the combination of petrol plus natural gas. The combination of petrol and natural gas gives petrochemicals and petrochemicals are used in many areas, like if you see Agriculture sector, we are using plastic tubes, cases, baskets, cultivation, implementations and tools, fertilizers. In industrial sector, we are using in carts, motor boats, communication devices, paper industries, bells, tides. In domestic purposes and other sectors, if you see, medical equipments. Clothes, bedding, socks, furniture, paints, cosmetics. So there is, you can't say that the one area where you can't use it. Most of the areas we are using petrochemicals. As it is giving so many advantages to us, so many applications to us, petrochemicals and petroleum is also called black gold black gold yes how the gold is so popular and expensive and so much advantages useful similarly petroleum is also useful to us that's why petroleum is called black gold okay we understand that how coal is useful to us and petroleum is useful to us now should know, should know that how coal and petroleum is formed so the formation of coal and petroleum. First we discuss about coal. Many plants and dense forests in the low lying wetlands are got buried in the ground and they are under the soil. And if they are under the soil for many years and if the soil is deposit more and more on them for so many years then what happens? So, <clears throat> dead forests, densive dead forests 
plus plants plus trees when they are got buried under the soil under the soil and this soil is also deposited more and more more and more over the period of time period of years so under the soil what happens all these are decomposed all they create some organic compounds because of high pressure high pressure because soil is pressing so much for many long, many long years as this is closed you have high temperature because two factors they decompose create organisms and all these components mainly contains carbon and this way that because of the carbon the coal is formed in that way the conversion of vegetation into carbon is called carbonization carbonization the conversion of carbon sorry the conversion of vegetation these organic compounds into carbon is called carbonization and this carbonization leads to formation of coal so in that way coal is formed now coming to petroleum <clears throat> petroleum is also has the same type of procedure but you know that petroleum actually available under the sea under the oceans so under the sea and the under the oceans there are some organisms some organisms called plankton they are very micron in size small in size these planktons are under the sea and in the oceans these planktons also undergone so much of pressure and undergone so much of high temperature because of soil on them inside the plankton bodies they have they have droplets of petroleum oil when they die the dead organisms when they die after the death the dead organisms of plankton releases the petroleum oil so not only plankton today's research work today's study of research work suggesting that living organisms any other dead organisms also when they buried under the soil for many years they are also producing the petroleum oil so in two cases both are buried under the ground and undergone high pressure and high temperature and they are releasing here is releasing the carbon which is the formation of coal and here is releasing the oil and that oil is the basis for petroleum so till now we discussed about the different advantages and applications of coal and petroleum so in the nature of fuels they are giving so much of advantage to us at the same time how the coin has two sides it is also have two sides of effects one side is good effects to us the other side is harmful effects to us so what are the harmful effects number 1 suppose the coal refinery plants generally 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 the petroleum refinery plants petroleum finding plants established in the sea in the oceans because they are available under the sea and under the oceans and whenever this petroleum oil or the petroleum products are trans transfer from that planting station to the land through the ships because of some problem the ships from the ships if the petroleum spill out to the sea water then that is very dangerous situation because because of petrol the living organisms in the sea water the mammals fish and other types of animals will die because of the petroleum spilling on the sea water is a very harmful effect you should be very careful when you are doing transportation of this oil from sea to the land it's the first harmful effect i can say so for sea creatures mammals fish etc 
will die if the petroleum fall on the sea water. Now second, petroleum when you use a fuel they are very harmful to the environment because they produce because they produce harmful greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, etc. And these greenhouse gases are the harmful and these are the, these are the responsible for rising temperature. Today everywhere in the newspapers, in news channels, in education institutions, wherever the big meetings are happening, we are using we are hearing one word called global warming. The global temperature is rising up. That's the reason why in summer we are feeling so much of hot. Last year, if you see in Hyderabad temperature, it rises to 45 to 48. And this year, all the people are afraid that maybe the temperature reaches to 50. So this rising temperature, the global warming, global warming because of greenhouse gases. These greenhouse gases go into the atmosphere, they're trapping the sun rays. And they're creating a shield over the earth. So that the, the trapped sun rays are not going back to the atmosphere. They are trapped around the earth. And that is the reason why earth temperature is rising up. That is one factor. And in addition to that, using this fossil fuels like coal, petrol, wood, etc. They burn in transportation system, in industry system. When they burn, they produce so many greenhouse gases. And because of that, the greenhouse effect is increasing more and more. And they are producing so much of air pollution also. Now, third one. Now, if you have power stations using the coal, which is called coal-fired power stations, these coal-fired power stations also releasing the greenhouse gases. In addition to that, they are releasing mercury, arsenic and different types of harmful chemicals. And because of the chemicals, harmful chemicals, the environment around the power stations are affecting the people who are taking, who are breathing near the power stations. They are getting so many diseases, so many problems. So, coal powered power stations, coal fire power stations releasing releasing mercury mercury and etc chemicals which is harmful to the people who are residing around the power stations. Next this coal and petroleum the sub products are also used in used in different ointments paints perfumes etc and if you take the paints the paints when you use the paints for walls and other types of sources these paints releasing so many toxic materials so many toxic elements and these toxic elements are harmful to the human beings and human beings getting so many diseases and skin problems so, the products like paints release toxic elements harmful to the human beings and create so many skin problems. So, that's why we should be very careful even though it is very advantage to us. But we have to see that whether it is helpful for the better life to the human beings or not. If they are not, we have to think. We have to think for the alternatives. That's the reason why we have developed the renewable energy sources. So I'm telling, I'm keep on telling that renewable energy sources are eco-friendly energy resources comparing to fossil fuels. But why the world till today they are depending on na, depending on fossil fuels? Why they're depending on still petrol? Why they're depending on diesel? Even, they, even though they create harmful effects to the human beings. Because they have some advantages relatively to the renewable energy sources. The first advantage is that efficiency. Non-fossil fuels like petrol is more efficient than 
renewable energy sources. For example, if you take petrol car, if you take solar powered car, which will move fast, which will have more acceleration, you are correct, petrol car only. It has more acceleration because it's more efficient. Next second is, their mass density is greater. Mass density means what? Means if you burn 1 kg of petrol and if you have 1 kg of wind, of course you can't say 1 kg of wind, for example say 1 kg of wind or if you get 1 kg of solar, so 1 kg of sun, sun rays. If you burn 1 kg of petrol, how much of energy you are getting, you are not getting that much of energy using renewable energy sources like solar energy or you can say uh, what you call wind energy, oceanic energy, tidal energy. Means less amount of mass gives huge amount of energy to us. That is why mass density of the fossil fuels is greater. <coughs> now third one, we are saying that the storage of fossil fuels are decreasing. That is where we are, we are discovering, we are finding the alternatives which are ren renewable energy resources. But the present study of the fossil fuels revealed that we have so many storages in under the ground, under the surface of the earth. Because of technology development, because of the what you can say uh, association of the different countries throughout the world, because of the satellite, satellite discoveries because of satellite investigations, it was revealed that we have still many more refinery, many more storages of petroleums. In that way, in future, even though renewable energy sources are very useful to us, still we depend on fossil fuels. So how do we conserve these fossil fuels? How do we save the energy? The burning topic today is how to save energy. You can have many methods to save energy. For example, you have a vehicle, automobile is there, a bike is there, which is run by uh, petrol. Then so don't use the bike using petrol for each and every work for shorter distances. Use the bike for longer distances in that you can save the petrol. Don't cook, cook for many times. Cook for a limited a specific amount of times in that way you can save LPG, LPG fuel. Don't use a diesel car for each and every purposes. Don't use car if you are going alone. Use cars and big type of automobiles when you are going uh, with your friends, with your family. In that way you can, you can save the fuel, you can reduce the pollution also. So in that way we should have get awareness to us as well as to public that how to use the fuel fuel dependent machines, fuel dependent devices so that we can save the energy and we can give that energy to our future and make a better life.